It's time for today's travel and cruise industry news. With the latest from travel and cruises around the world, here's your host, Chili Falls. Hey, good morning and welcome to Monday's travel and cruise industry news podcast. On this is the 15th day of April 2024, coming to you from Bedford County, Virginia. Seasonably warm, hit in the mid 80s yesterday. It's going to be 80 all week. I'm loving it. So, um, before we get started this morning, I see that Hot Air Tom is with us from the um, hot tub uh, at the Vibe Beach Club on on the Escape. I was up on deck 19. But Hot Air Tom, I do hope that you paid your taxes before you skipped the country because today's tax day. And I'd hate to see you get in trouble. Anyway, we got a ton of news this morning, folks. Shuttle bus act, a lot of it from all weekend. I mean, it was a busy weekend. Shuttle bus accident at the cruise terminal. Also today, a mom arrested after cruising without her kids. Problems for the legend embarkation today. Search continues for a missing cruise passenger, and that's down in Cozumel. Princess Upgrades Dining Options, Pride to Norfolk, Crew Member Missing from the Rotterdam, Explorer 2 to La Romana, and Royal Caribbean to visit Vanilla Islands. Wow, that and lots more here at 11 o'clock this morning. Uh, Also, good morning to Joanne, Gretchen, Mike, Cindy. Glad all you guys are uh, with me today. If you're listening via the podcast, you can always access the podcast via my blog, which is accessadventure.net, or wherever you get your podcasts from. All the big guys, just search for travel and cruise industry news, and up pops the fat travel guy. Anytime you're listening to the podcast, if you want to jump over to see uh, clips or interviews or pictures we're using on that day's show, there's always a link in the description of the podcast. So you can do just that. Now, we got several things to cover before we get to the news today. One, I had hoped that I was going to be in Norfolk this morning, hopefully finding Jason and Jen before they get on the Carnival Legend. If you remember, and we'll talk about that in a minute too, Carnival Legend is... Sailing out of Norfolk, it was supposed to sail out of Baltimore. Uh, So I was going to go down, number one, to see the port. Number two, to hopefully film some stuff on the legend and to meet uh, Jason and Jennifer. Well, on Saturday, it looked like the weather was going to be absolutely perfect. Yeah, it's about a five-hour drive from here, four and a half or so. Uh, but that's okay. So I called the port because the information I had didn't say that there was uh, handicapped parking near the uh, embarkation debarkation point for uh, the uh, you know at the terminal. So I called and says, uh, "Yeah, you got some handicapped parking." I said, "Oh yeah, 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 yeah." I said, "Well, how close is it?" Well. It's not very close. You have to park out in one of the outer lots and then take the shuttle bus in. And I said, and the shuttle bus is wheelchair accessible? Well, well, no, not all of them. I think there is one. I said, how many are there? Oh, I don't know. 10 or 12. So I have to park way out away from the, the, the embarkation area and then take a shuttle in to get close to to the boat. Is that correct? Uh, Well, yeah. I said, there's not any place that you can do just, uh, uh, you know, get close to the ship. I said, what happens if you're a solo traveler and you've got to transport your luggage and everything from out in that outer lot And you have to sit there and wait forever to get one that's wheelchair accessible. 
oh, well, you could come drop your luggage off or somebody could drop you off. And I said, yeah, but I'm solo. Uh, well, then you have to go out there in the parking lot. So I said, okay, um, are you guys even aware of how messed up things are going to be on Monday? Well, no. Now, we did this all the time. We do a couple shifts a year. <laughs> and I said, yeah, you got you know, a, a, probably 25 buses coming from Baltimore, and they're all going to hit and dump people off at once. It's going to be a total cluster. So in lieu of the fact that I'm not sure how close I could park, I decided to opt out of going to Norfolk today. So Jason and Jen, uh, sorry, I'm not going to be there uh, when you get off. Oh, you'd be off now. You so We've passed the point where I was going to, they were going to get there about 10 o'clock. So they're probably on board now or waiting to get on board. And I'm afraid that it's going to not be very smooth. But hopefully we'll get some reports from them. All right, so the, the next thing uh, this morning, folks, we've got uh, some, some things to go over before we get to uh, the important stuff of the day. This, of course, is uh, Bethany. She's on her way home, and I am way behind on her stuff. So I got to do some catching up uh, with Bethany. Meanwhile, uh, Amigo John, let's see, that would be Amigo John, is uh, in Florence, uh, Italy. Uh, that would be Henry, his uh, firstborn uh, exchange student son. And uh, the other gentleman there is, ooh, uh, what was his name? His name is Dusty, who is um, John's car dealer, uh, a fine watch collector, a day trader, and he used to work for John. So they got together there in Florence and had, uh, had a meal, and that's uh, with Henry uh, for another meal uh, there in Florence. John's going to be over there for quite a while, so we'll be sharing a bunch of stuff. But I thought my hats off go to the guy that did the likeness of John's butt. Uh, I thought he did a pretty good job there. Uh, that's over there in Florence, of course. And uh, then I, I, John had this picture of Panerai watches. Does this mean he bought a watch? I, I don't know about that one. Uh, inside of one of the churches, and I'm going to have to fuss it, John. He sent some wonderful clips, only he sent them on regular Facebook, and I can't steal them. I can steal pictures from Facebook, but he's got to send the clips on Messenger. So I'm going to get him to send the clips uh, on Messenger so I can show them another day. Um, this is uh, around Ponte Delgado. No, that's not around Ponte Delgado. That's in Florence. And this is on the bus going up on the mountainside there to uh, wherever they were going. I don't know. And uh, then that's the pizza. They had some real honest-to-God pizza. And that would be the cathedral uh, there in Florence. So uh, we're going to have a lot of stuff from John going ahead. Then a hot air Tom is in Ponta Delgado today. Well, what he was supposed to swim with the dolphins this morning, and, and what happened, folks? Uh, the dolphin says, "No, no, 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 no! Do not send us that dude." So they canceled out his swim with the dolphins. He gets back to the cabin and look at this! Congratulations! This is hot air Tom. He's getting congratulations, and if you can't see that, it says. Congratulations, Ambassador. Does that mean we have to change Hot Air Tom's name to Ambassador Tom? I don't know if I can do that. 
All right, so then he got off to a walking tour there in Ponta Delgado, uh, which I hope he found out all the places I'll need to go when I'm there on my first visit uh, coming up in January. And that, of course, is looking back at the escape in Ponta Delgado, uh, Portugal. So that's from a Hot Air Tom. And by the way, Jason gets on the legend today. And uh, this is, he sails across to uh, the Canary Islands and then hits a couple ports. And he ends up in Civitavecchia. That would be in Rome. So, uh, and like I say, hopefully we'll be getting a lot of information from uh, Jason on the trip. All right, I'll be back with um, all a bunch of news stories today. And we've got a lot of stuff to cover. But I'll be back with some news stories after a quick break from one of our network sponsors. All right. Let's see what we got here. The first story today. Might as well deal with the legend. Carnival Legends departure today will be from Norfolk, Virginia, rather than Baltimore, as originally planned. That was because of the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge on March 26. Since that time, Carnival Legend has been operating from Norfolk as a home port, as the Port of Baltimore is not yet to be able to open. Today, sailing has special challenges, as this is a transatlantic cruise that will leave, lead Carnival Legend to a month-long dry dock in Spain. Because of the nature of the voyage, there are challenges with parking at the embarkation port, but shuttles are being provided for those guests who register for the service. Carnival Cruise Line also arranged for a limited number of buses to transport guests from Baltimore to Norfolk, with the shuttle service beginning at 8 a.m., the last sh shuttle leaving Baltimore at 10 a.m. That's about a five-hour bus trip, though. The guests were required to register for the complimentary service by Friday to reserve their seat. Whether the guests are taking advantage of the shuttle service between Baltimore and Norfolk or will be making their own way to Virginia to board Carnival Legend, travelers' pre-selected terminal arrival appointments remain as scheduled for check-in. The cruise line has extended the embarkation window, however, to give everyone adequate time for the extra travel. Carnival Legend is scheduled to return to service with an eight-night uh, European sailing on from Barcelona on M May the 30th, visiting several t uh, top ports in the Mediterranean. The ship will then sail a one-way voyage from Barcelona to Dover, where she will remain homeported through mid-August. At that time, Carnival Legend will offer six 10-night sailings round trip from Rome before returning to North America to sail from Tampa through the winter. A terrible accident happened at the port of Honolulu on Friday. According to Hawaii News Now, a shuttle bus was dropping off guests near Pier 2 Cruise Terminal, approximately 10.20 a.m., when the bus moved forward unexpectedly and the driver inadvertently hit the gas instead of the brake. The bus collided with a group of nearby pedestrians and crashed into concrete barriers. The guests were pinned against the barriers, according to first responders on the scene. Five pedestrians were seriously injured, and one of them, a 68-year-old woman, was in critical condition and later passed away at a local hospital. One other person was taken to the hospital in stable condition, while six other individuals received minor injuries and declined hospital care. While it's not been confirmed that those injured are cruise guests, the incident happened in a private parking lot at Pier 2 Cruise Terminal, where Carnival Miracle was visiting. Oceana Regatta was also in port, was docked, but was docked some distance away 
at Pier 11. Would you like to see me get chased by a bear? You might just get your chance when you cruise with Chile to Alaska. Grand Princess sails August 14th from Vancouver to Anchorage. Starts as low as $395 per person, plus taxes and port charges. That's Alaska Cruise with Chile. Just give me a call. Four, three. A Houston mother has been charged with child abandonment after leaving her two children alone to embark on a cruise from Florida. 29-year-old Lakeisha Woods Williams was arrested following her return from a cruise that departed from Florida in early April. Neighbors in the luxury high-rise in Houston, where Williams lives, reported seeing her leave with luggage on Thursday, April the 4th, but without her children. Alarms were raised when she did not return, prompting a welfare check by Harris County Precinct 5 deputies. Upon entering the flat on April the 9th, authorities found William's 8-year-old son and 6-year-old daughter alone in conditions that were far from safe. The home was in scattered, uh, the home had a smell of urine and leftover food scattered throughout the high-rise apartment. The children informed the deputies that their mother had gone on a cruise. The mother had left a webcam running and a telephone, which she used to check in on her kids while she was out having fun. After she returned home on Wednesday the 10th, the mother lied to authorities about her identity. The two children, an eight-year-old boy and six-year-old girl, were in re relatively good health when firefighters entered the apartment. They've since been handed over to family members. Brad Solomon was celebrating his birthday with his wife, Mimi, by taking a family cruise on Royal Caribbean's Icon of the Seas. Their seven-night voyage to Mexico was meant to be the last big vacation, as Brad suffers from frontal temporal dementia, a progressive disease that causes cognitive difficulties, such as difficulty communicating. Unfortunately, the couple's dream trip turned into a nightmare when Brad went missing shortly after dis disembarking with Coach Mel on April the 3rd. His worried wife notified local police immediately, and the family, along with local military and rescue teams, as well as representatives from Royal Caribbean, have been searching for the 66-year-old man ever since. While the locals have been extremely helpful with reporting possible sightings of Mr. Solomon, the family hasn't yet been able to catch up to him, potentially because he has a habit of walking quickly and with purpose, even when he is flustered or confused and likely would not accept help from a stranger. When asked if anyone uh, does spot the gentleman, they should trail him at a distance and call local authorities to report the sighting. While the search for the missing passenger has largely focused on Cozumel's more populated city areas, the family and rescue teams are shifting tactics because Brad hasn't been captured on surveillance cameras since the afternoon of April the 10th. While the search for the missing passenger was largely focused in the city, the family and rescue teams are now moving to the more jungle areas of Cochamel. Princess Cruises announced Saturday it is making significant enhancement to the main dining options found across its fleet. Guests will have the flexibility and choice when it comes to their dining experience by offering traditional, reservable, or walk-in anytime, coupled with the brand's industry-exclusive Ocean Now location-based anywhere service via the Medallion. Starting on April 15th, the new approach will launch on Princess Voyages departing September 14th and beyond. To support these changes and the transition to the new system, main dining reservations 
that already have been made for voyages sailing September 14th and beyond on any ship except Sun Princess will be canceled. Main dining reservations for guests sailing through September 13th will not be affected. Starting June 17th, booked guests will be able to use the app ahead of the voyage to opt into traditional seating in a dedicated dining room with the same waiter, same table, and same time each night, or flexible dining, allowing them to enjoy dinner at any available time and table size of their choosing in either reservable or open seating dining room. This change does not affect guests best in uh, booked in specialty dining restaurants or suite or reserve collection accommodations who enjoy a dedicated dining room on Prince's ships where no reservations are required. How would you like to explore Punta Delgada, Portugal with me for the first time? I've not been there before, but I'm going in January. So why not join me on a cruise with Chile, Miami to Southampton Transatlantic for 13 nights on the beautiful Norwegian Bliss. Sails January 4th from Miami to Southampton in England on the 17th. That's 13 night, folks. Prices start at $7.99. That's double occupancy, but you can't beat that. Of course, you got to add the taxes and port charges and anything else you want to it. But starting from $7.99. That's Cruise with Chile, Miami to Southampton on January 4th. Guests aboard the one-way repositioning cruise of Carnival Pride that was to take the ship from Tampa to Baltimore have now learned for certain that they will instead be disembarking in Norfolk. Since the collapse of the Francis, Keys, uh, Francis Scott Key Bridge on March 26, there's been uncertainty about whether or not marine traffic would be able to access the port of Baltimore in time for the ship's embarkation on April 21st. Now the cruise line has confirmed that reaching Baltimore will not be possible and the ship is instead going to debark in Norfolk. Carnival Cruise Line is arranging complimentary bus transportation to all four major airports in the region. A space is limited on the shuttle buses, however, so the cruise line is asking for guests to complete a debarkation questionnaire to confirm the travel needs and arrangements so transportation can be arranged. Guests are also asked to note if fully accessible vehicle for a scooter or wheelchair is needed. To assist guests with rearranging flights to later times if necessary, a drive to D.C. area airports could be roughly five hours or so from Norfolk Cruise Terminal. All guests are able to access the ship's Wi-Fi for 24 hours so they can make arrangements and travel plans. If passengers have booked airfare through Carnival's Fly to Fun program, those flights will be automatically updated. Carnival Pride's next sailing, the April 21st departure, a seven-night Eastern Caribbean sailing, will depart from Norfolk, and guests booked on that cruise have been notified of the change. Shuttle service is being provided for both embarkation and debarkation, though travelers do have to register for the service in advance. Further details on how to do that will be communicated to guests in the next few days. At this time, it is unknown when the Port of Baltimore may reopen to cruise ship traffic, but guests booked on any sailing from the city in the next few weeks should stay close in close contact with the cruise line for changes and updates. A crew member has been reported missing from the Holland American Rotterdam and search Operations have been initiated to try and locate the individual. At this time, the identity, age, gender, crew position, or nationality of the individual have not been released in order to safeguard the privacy. In a statement from Holland America, the cruise line said a team member from Rotterdam was reported missing after the ship docked in Fort Lauderdale on April the 13th 
A review of closed circuit TV footage indicates the person went purposely overboard around 9.45 p.m. on April 12th while the ship was sailing off the Florida Keys. The U.S. Coast Guard was notified and began a search of the area, which remains underway. And Chili Cruises did learn this morning that that search has now been suspended. UK-based Morella Cruises has designated the Dominican Republic, specifically La Romana, as its home port for the winter 24-25 season. Under this arrangement, the Explorer 2 vessel will make weekly visits to Dominican ports leading to the arrival of four flights from England each time the ship docks. This replaces the entire season of sailings involving Middle East and Asian itineraries that were canceled due to the conflict in the Red Sea. Royal Caribbean International will make a series of inaugural visits to the Vanilla Islands with Serenade of the Seas upcoming in May. Serenade of the Seas is scheduled to visit, visit four islands, Seychelles on May 14th, Madagascar on May 17th, Mauritius on May 19th, and Reunion on May 20th. Chief Executive Officer of Vanilla Islands Organization said that this visit promises to inaugurate a new era of travel and discovery for the region. Wow. And that brings to an end the news portion of today's show. Man, that's a lot of stories, folks. So, all right, let's go over and see who is fussing at me in the chat room. All right, uh, let's see. I said hello to Tom and uh, Joanne and Gretchen, Mike and Cindy. Katie's with us. Hi, Katie. There's Bob. Good morning, Bob. Cindy says, congratulations to Tom. That's Ambassador Tom. Sonny's with us. Sonny's down in Mississippi. Thankfully, those storms have finally moved out of Mississippi, Sonny. Emily says hello to everyone. Joanne says, that mother is a disgrace. I, I mean, I hope to hell the cruise line's banner for life. And she ought to go to jail, I would think. But yeah. Um, Cindy says, thanks, everyone. It's just me. I changed, updated my name. Yeah, we said that one day last week, Emily, probably when you were sleeping in or walking dogs or doing something. No. So. Gretchen says, I knew that. But welcome anyway, Gretchen says. Yeah, of course. Cindy's always welcome. And the girls, too. <laughs> Emily says, I wondered. Todd says, good morning, everybody. Great stories today. Thank you, Todd. Speaking of MCL, they have brand new ship. Brand new ship for MCL. No, they don't. NCL Aqua. Well, yeah, it's under construction. Eddie's already booked on. Well, sure, you can book cruises on it, but the ship's not out yet. It's still under construction. So, yeah, that's one of uh, eight ships that they have ordered now. I had a story on that last week, Emily. Uh, yeah, eight new ships that uh, NC, well, Nor Norwegian Holding has on order. Sonny says, we'll see how Eddie likes it. Yep. I'm booked on Aqua also, February 2026. Man, you guys get so far ahead. I mean, I thought it was bad that I'm on a couple of hot air Tom cruises in 25, and you guys are already into 26. Man, I'm behind schedule. I'm afraid the smaller spaces on the newer NCL ships are not for me. Emily says, congrats, Ambassador Tom. Uh, 
Uh, Emily says they are smaller. Uh, I think the um, studios are smaller on the newer ships. Uh, Cindy says not been on Viva yet. Next February from Puerto Rico. Nice. Sonny says, good. Cindy can't wait to hear your review. Absolutely. The ship is not even built. That's crazy. Well, it's under, it's being built. It takes like two years to build these ships, Emily. You don't, do, you don't plant a seed and it grows overnight. So it takes a while. Uh, there's and, and they can have several ships underway at the same time, different stages of construction. So all spaces and venues on newer NCL ships have been cut in space. Yeah, that looks that way. But anyway, that's going to wrap up a very busy day this morning, folks. Uh, of course, I've been up and at it early. Sorry, I'm not down there with Jason. If Jason uh, did get a chance to jump into the day show, but we're looking forward to uh, following your exploits, Jason. I hope you'll let me know on that. All right, guys, that's going to put an end to today's show. Uh, as always, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, think about cruising. And hopefully one day soon, we'll all get together on the high seas. I'll see you next time from Travel and Cruise Industry News Podcast. Have a great day, everybody. I regularly post videos on all facets of the travel and cruise industry. So if you like to keep up with the latest in cruise ships, ports of call, cruises themselves, chilly chats, and travel and cruise industry news, just hit the little subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner Hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when a new video is up or we go live. This video was produced by Chili's Cruises.